Bonjour mes amis, my name is Freya and welcome to Star Trek Resurgence. This is actually going to be the first time ever on this channel I have played a game after it came out, like right after. I was going to do that with Stray, but I just didn't have the time. Star Trek Resurgence came out yesterday from my perspective. By the time this gets uploaded, assuming I get to edit the video in a timely manner, it will have come out two days ago. That is the soonest I have ever jumped on a game. As you probably are aware, if you watch my channel, you know I like to play older games, and you also probably know I've been on a real big Star Trek kick lately. This game did not get a lot of advertising. I almost missed it. Genuinely. So we got play, settings, choices, credits, and exit. I don't know what choices means. Alright, let's just play. Got three slots, which means I can let my partner play too. This is a dramatic labs adventure. The relationships and events you are about to experience will be shaped by the choices you make. I love it when games do that. I've heard really good things about this game. The following cutscene does not play correctly the first time. It's a bit long, so I'm just going to show you what the problem was, and then skip ahead to after I fix the issue. That way you don't have to watch it twice, and someone else who has the same glitch can still recognize it and try out the solution I used. Is that a Bolian? I don't know much about the Bolians yet. I just finished DS9 for context and where I am with the, the series. Ooh! watching a cutscene. I wasn't expecting to do anything. Oh no, it froze. The more I right-click, the more it falls. Was I supposed to hold it? Okay, okay, okay. I think I got it. Captain's log, stardate 57931.4. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. I know I am. That's more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute, Jara Ryder. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. But I do have some semblance of control here. Thanks. No problem. I, uh... I'm not great with flying. But these little shuttles... are the worst. Here's a tip. Don't close your eyes. You'd think that would make it easier, but it only makes it worse. Look out the window, pick a star, and just focus on that. Same with seasickness. I'll give it a try. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Jara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But 
if she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the XO this ship needs right now. Okay, so I need to rebind right trigger to actually right clicking. I think that's the problem. Walking animation's a little stiff. Okay. But the faces look great. Can I run? Examine. Livery. A star base on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. I already like her. Commander? I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintaris 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class. I, I mean, all time. In the history of the Academy. Really? That's quite impressive. Thank you. It was tough, but you know, I set my mind to it and it paid off. Please place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You, you finished in what, like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really... It, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. I, I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground. The pleasure is mine. Ensign... Paul Calloway. Good to meet you. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. <laughs> this poor Ensign. He wants to impress me so bad. Okay. Find Commander Ermod. Oh, by the way, um, if any of you have the same problem that I had at first Good here... Good day, Commander. Thanks. If any of you have the same problem that I had, um, I ran it in compatibility mode for Windows 8 and that fixed the problem. Okay, which one I use, Commander? If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermont is a bullion, so I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Okay, okay, so she's not a bullion. Uh, what the heck is the line down the middle then? You'll get to watch me puzzling about this one for the rest of the video. She's a Kobliad, or at least part Kobliad, and they've only been in a handful of Trek episodes. Please do not drag me for this infraction. I- I do not remember what that Trek race is. Starbase 128 has four docks. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. Oh, I'm not even on board yet. Uh, well, you're colorful, but you're not the color Excuse I Excuse me. That sounds racist. I... I'm looking for a blue guy. Or girl. I actually don't know if the commander is a woman. God, racist and sexist today. Oh, okay, I, I can run. I cannot jump. Are you alright? Yeah, I I'm just... Well, I'm not sure where my departure dock is. The Resolute's gonna leave without me. Look here. The Resolute is leaving from this dock. Ah, huh, you're right. Nerves must be getting to me. Do I go with him or do I look for the bullion? Thanks so much, Commander. 
What was it? Ermok? Blue skin. Blue skin. Any of these people. Excuse me. Have you seen a Bolian around here? Yes, sir. Right back there, near the replicator. Oh, okay. Ah, there he is. Could have sworn he wasn't Thank there you. before. Happy to help, Commander. Excuse me, sorry. Hello. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Rydak. I'm Commander okay. Jan Ermot, Operations okay. Officer on the Resolute. They also have the line. That's where I got confused. Good All right. Enough. I'm not, like, completely off. I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. I know conditions are less than ideal at the moment. It was a bit bumpy, but otherwise okay. My apologies. This storm is unlike anything I've seen before. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming from a premier starship and all. To our little research vessel. What exactly have you heard about me? First in your class at the Academy. Received the Starfleet Award of Valor during the Dominion War. Most recently, Tactical Officer and Chief of Security on the USS Endeavor. You've done your homework. Like I said, we're very lucky. It's Star Trek to... Tra Tradition. To just admire the ship for a bit. The USS Resident. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half, venting plasma, fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but... No one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but... It was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like for you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It does weigh heavy. There are some things you can't forget. It's been six months. What's the attitude among the crew now? Unsettled. But I hope that a new mission will help them move forward. If not, move on. Listen. I realize you've known Captain Solano for quite some time. And I'm sure you're ready to bring your best. But I should warn you that when the Captain announced you would be the new First Officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake. That he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly first. Thank you. Always good to have a sense for what you're walking into. I just thought you ought to know. I appreciate it. Starfleet has assigned us a high-priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the captain brief you on board. Press enter to explore the impact of your choices. Okay, Callaway was grateful for my guidance when he was nervous on the flight. Ermot, I made a good first impression, came off as inquisitive and appreciative while showing empathy. That's good! I'm trying to be, like, sensitive yet professional. That's what I'm going for No, he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. This is cool! I get to see what people think of me! Oh, I love that! I wonder if I'm, like, part Betazoid. And that's why, like, I can sense it. Am I someone else now? That doesn't Stuck. Look I got just the thing. Plasma torch. Ah, oh, heck. Uh. Ah! Plasma torch! Oh, heck. Okay. What? 
Oh! I see! I actually have to do things! It's not just a choose-your-own-adventure game! Turn my mouth. That's neat. Uh, five? What? Oh no, that's S. Okay. I missed you. I thought that thing was totally fried. A trill! And she's pretty. Nice work, Carter. Nothing to it, Neely. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. She's pretty. Hi. 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 I can't run in the corridors? Hi. You have pretty hair. Engineer. I heard the new EXO just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. You and me working together, we can tackle anything he throws at us. Your optimism is positively contagious. I love me a pretty girl with spots! <laughs> Like we got here before. Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty officers Ed Salar, Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Ed Salar on repeated occasions. Uh, apologies for the delay, Commander. I do not want your apologies. Simply see to it that it does not happen again. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. This ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. Whatever it throws at us, we'll be ready. We've got the best chief engineer in the fleet. I am a Vulcan, Mr. Diaz. <laughs> Flattery is not necessary. All that I require is that you do your job. Right now, that entails critical preparations, because long-range sensors show that these disturbances will be more severe at our destination the Hotari system. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Roger Commander Chovak. I didn't mean to flatter him. I just wanted to say we'd be ready. All hands on deck. Oh, uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chovak said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. It all comes down to us, Nilly. We're the ones who will get it ready. I know what we can do. But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. 
They seem all right. Something that happened six months ago while they were off on another ship? Well, that's nothing to hold against them. Yeah, you're right. I guess getting a little new blood on board doesn't hurt. Oh, okay. I see, I see, okay. He found me to be respectful and responsible! Oh, cool! Okay! I thought he didn't like me! Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda! You're here?! We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. Wouldn't take long to reverse that transfer and get you right back on the Adirondack. I didn't know you had that kind of authority. Oh, Carter's going places. You'd be surprised what he can do. Still, I am glad to be here. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can rustle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. I'm so nervous about this. Here, let me help you. Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa. Good to go. So is she like my girlfriend? She was looking at me some type of way. See you on the other side. I wonder if I can choose my own romance. She appreciated my playful attitude and hoped it might be a spark of mutual attraction. Okay. Debating magnetic souls. Uh. thought that shuttlecraft was gonna hit us. Just like bonk us right off the side. Am I gonna be someone else again? Does that mean I don't actually have to do the repairs? Oh thank god. Captain Solano should be here momentarily. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Doridium to keep your cell structure stabilized. Kobliads. Or bad things start to happen. And we have plenty of Doridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. I don't think I've heard that and one. And help yourself to whatever you like from Kobe. the No wonder I didn't recognize her species. I've seen screen caps of people like her. I saw the vertical line in Assumed Bolian, I guess. He's still got a thing for trains. The warp engines of their day, apparently. Okay, so do I, like, know the captain? Can't look at his computer. I can't believe he keeps this around. Don't even know where mine is. 
Jara Rydek. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the Academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrid Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. My only regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. That would be totally unnecessary. I don't need any pomp and circumstance. You've been here all of five minutes, and already you're trying to make us more efficient. I like it. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. You'll have to forgive me. I don't really know the details. Starfleet has been kind enough to keep the story contained. Probably because they want to protect me. But I don't mind telling you. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there. Within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system, creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship can handle. It was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make, and I have to live with the consequences. You're being too hard on yourself. It wasn't your fault. It's not a question of blame. It's about responsibility. No matter what the circumstances. In my defense, I will say, I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was a lot of pushback from my former XO. I, I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission? I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record total anomaly like nothing we've seen before and you'll never guess where it leads Hatari exactly very nearly in the precise location where we're headed where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater who is the senior diplomat we're escorting that I don't know Starfleet hasn't said but I don't want to get ahead of myself I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying. You have my full support. 
It's been a dream of mine since before I can remember. So I would be honored to become a captain someday. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have my promise. I'll do everything in my power to see that it happens. Thank you. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. He's all right, but I don't like his mustache. He was reassured by my modesty and leadership potential. I'm doing good. Okay. Where do you go? There do you go. There do you go. There you went. Everyone, if I could have your attention for a moment. I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydek, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman. One of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks but in Jordan? humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook. Our chief science officer. I've come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Could be human? Commander Rydek, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian, who's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some Could time. Could be human? And I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. If anything, the honor is mine. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I feel like I'm missing some context with regard to her species. I'll do some research before the next episode. Basically, their species was dying off in the mid-24th century, and the Federation was trying to get them the geridium they needed to live. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. Not that I've done anything close to what you've done. You really do know a thing or two about me. I'm glad I could inspire you, but it's important to chart your own path. Thanks. You can count on it. Chose, I'm glad I inspire you. I didn't I didn't choose to have a butt after that. And then of course you've already met Commander Ermont. Please do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. Have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. Okay, it says sit in captain's chair when ready. Um, but I I want to just save and exit and There's subtitles. Okay, next time there will be subtitles. It kind of froze when I Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. That's gonna do it for this video, so thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!